When you were a kid, did you imagine that this would be your life, that you would be a big time Hollywood movie director? Uh, no. I don't think in our wildest dreams we thought we would be movie directors. Hello, welcome to Nilu TV. I'm your host, Nilu Naderi. Today, I have a very special guest, a good friend of mine, Mr. David Zucker, writer and director of Airplane, Naked Guns, Scary Movie, Top Secret. 40 years ago, July 1980, was when Airplane debuted in the United States and has since become a classic. I mean, these guys created a whole genre of comedy. And today, David's here to talk to you about his creative process and what has he been up to all these years? Keep watching. David, thanks for having me today. When you were a kid, did you imagine that this would be your life, that you would be a big time Hollywood movie director? Uh, no. I always wanted to make jokes. And so from my earliest days in school, in first grade, I was making kids laugh. Third grade, I started writing comic books. And then I was in school talent shows doing doing jokes uh like sketches and then and then we put together a theater because we couldn't you know i couldn't get a job i applied at advertising agencies one thing led to another and we did we did our theater in madison on the campus there and then uh, that was successful so we moved the show out to la and that became a success and then we were able to figure out how to do kentucky fried movie and just kind of it happened you know, one day at a time, one year at a time. Because when you get to one hill, you can see the next hill. Right. I don't think in our wildest dreams we thought we would be movie directors. Mm. In hindsight, life had bigger plans for you. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> God hit no. You created Airplane with your brother and one of your closest childhood friends. Uh, so tell us a little bit how this idea of Airplane even came to be. As part of the show, we used to redub serious movies. Uh -huh. And one time we came across this very serious movie. It was called Zero Hour, and it was the exact plot of uh, what was to become Airplane. And, you know, the airliner goes up, there's food poisoning, a guy with PTSD has to fly it on a plane. So then we thought, wait a minute, we were looking around for an idea to do for a, a movie. So we thought, why don't we remake this thing and recast it? with the same style of actors. So we get Robert Stack, uh, Peter Graves, Leslie Nielsen, mm -hmm. uh, Lloyd Bridges, and then, uh, you know, the romantic couple, which became Julie Haggerty and Bob Hayes. If you think about it, a line like, I am serious, and don't call me Shirley, which was said by Leslie Nielsen would not have been as funny said from a wisecracking comedian type. It was a leap for any studio to try this, but fortunately, you know, we found one guy who was uh, Michael Eisner, and then Jeff Katzenberg also helped out on it. But uh, when we when we took it around, every studio turned it down. They just didn't get it. Did that deter you at all? Like, or did you feel like, oh, maybe it's not as funny as you think it is? We thought we had we had come up with machine guns in the Civil War, and that someone, whichever side used this, would would win and, you know, kill the most people. And that's what our <laughs> career has always been about, you know, killing the most people. What was it like to be, you know, to ha to know that you had machine guns in the Civil War and then put it out there and actually have that response from... Well, from we, the you know, audience? we get asked a lot, were we surprised that what a big hit it was? Well, we have been saying for five years, because we started writing the movie in 1975, it didn't come out till 1980. So we kept saying, this is going to be a big hit. And so when it was a big hit, we really weren't surprised. But what was surprising was how long the movie would last and continue to be mm. relevant and continue to be, to be funny uh, 40 years later. To this day, it's to one this, of the most yeah. loved comedies of all time. It's like a comedic masterpiece. Well, thank you. But <laughs> I mean, if I do say myself, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's gone up in the in the rankings, you know, from yeah. for, you know, it was one of the top. 20 comedies and then top 10, top five. And, you know, I think, you know, it's, it's going to continue to go up because it just lasts. And as the fans of some like it hot, uh, die off, I think airplane will continue to, to rise in the, in the poll. But it's not about numbers. It's just about how much the movie connects. And over the years, uh, you've kind of heard from other successful directors, writers who, were inspired by you, right? 
Can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, what does that feel like? Even Mel Brooks, uh, you know, took us out to lunch after Airplane opened and he was very nice to it. And he wanted to, like, he said, let's do a movie. I just want to be on the set with you guys. And yeah. I was like, oh my God, that was, it's Mel Brooks. And I did, I ran into Woody Allen once and he told me how much he loved it. And these are like, those are the people who were uh, in the generation before us. And then who liked it even more were the generation that came after us, like the Farrelly brothers right. and Matt Stone and Trey Parker. And uh, today, uh, the Impractical Jokers. And that's that's been an absolute joy for me to see how they love the movie. Just everyday people who they, you know, I've talked to people about this movie and they say they grew up watching it with their families and it was something that they did together because everyone found it funny and there was new jokes that they would discover every t every time they watched it. Um, have you had fans talk to you about that? Well, I don't hang around with everyday people and I don't <laughs> care what they think. <laughs> okay, so, well, yeah. moving on from there. <laughs> No, it's just, it's been wonderful. I, I get to be the guy who did airplanes. So, uh, you know, they can never take that away from me. And I have my house, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, David, what's your creative process like? In the case of airplane, it was zero hour. And we would watch the movie and then think of jokes. And the three of us would be in the room together. And we'd throw out, out ideas. And the advantage of having a collaboration is that you get an instant reaction. So when somebody, mm -hmm. somebody, and I can't remember who it was, came up with, I am serious and don't call me Shirley. And it, that, it was, it got an instant laugh. Or, uh, I take it black like my men. Somebody <laughs> said, said that. And then we just instantly laughed. And I think we had a, a transcript of zero hour typed up. So we had the, the basic straight dialogue there. And then it was, it was just a matter of, you know, putting in the jokes. So if you said something or Jim or Jerry said something and the other two didn't find it funny, it was out. Yeah, well, we just didn't, we just kept going or somebody would add to it. When uh, Leslie Nielsen asked the stewardess, uh, how are you bearing up? And she said, uh, I'm scared. I've never been so scared. And besides, I'm 26 and I'm not married. I mean, so <laughs> somebody just came up with that. That's funny even today. It's funny even today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then... The other two guys came up with, uh, the, the, the other lady comes in, doctor says, okay, how are you bearing up? And she says, uh, well, to be frank, I've never been so scared, but at least I have a husband. <laughs> and so it was perfect. And that joke was very funny 40 years ago. And it's funny today. It's just, I love the, the timeless, uh, aspects of it. The comedy just comes so easily and fluidly. But what I think what people don't realize is that you guys actually have rules to comedy. There is a definite discipline. And so we, over the course of, you know, years, decades, we evolved the, our 15 rules of comedy. Of course, the 15th rule is there are no rules. So, you know, uh, people we've had writing with us said, well, I can do this because it's the 15th rule. I said, and we'd say, you can't use that. Only a Jedi can use that. <laughs> Meaning only three of us. <laughs> and, and Pat Proft. I mean, I have, you know, Pat Proft is as much of the, you know, the fourth partner. Uh, and in fact, to this day, I, I write, I really don't write with Jerry and Jim. I write with Pat Proft. You know, we're just, we're trying to find our Michael Eisner of 2020 who will, you know, recognize what genius these scripts are. Do you have scripts right now that you are looking to take on and Hollywood's just not willing to take the risk right yeah we have we have two scripts uh, one is a <clears throat> spoof on film noir there were hundreds of movies made in that film noir period mm -hmm. and we took about 20 of them and uh and melted that down to like 10 main movies and we worked it into one plot and it's just it's wonderful it's a musical it's everything but nobody gets it so um you know we, we just have to wait till till Michael Eisner. Maybe I should actually go to Michael Eisner. <laughs> he would probably get this. Obviously, you are a writer and a director, but you express your creativity in many ways, right? Like, um, yeah. so you love to design. Yeah, I love interior design. <laughs> I love building <laughs> stuff. I love remodeling my home. And uh, right now I'm building a tree house. 
and uh, I'm, I'm interested in Davy Crockett, and I had a whole group uh, of people who were into that, and we would have a, uh, a rendezvous every two years at my ranch that I owned in Ojai. So David, I, I want to close out, but before we do, um, you know, we're in a situation right now where it, people are scared to tell jokes. People are scared to be funny yeah. because of the climate. Uh, what is your perspective on that? And what's your advice, you know, for people who do want to create things that uplift and make you laugh, but are a little bit hesitant? You know, as long as you're, I mean, I want to say kind of pure of heart. I mean, you're not racist. You're not a jerk. You're not this or that. And you, you make jokes that, that are, that make people laugh. Occasionally I, I read stuff about like, uh, the black dudes subtitling them and, and talking in ways that white people can't understand or anything like, like that is maybe not, P it isn't PC. You know what they say? See a broad to get that booty act <laughs> Lay it down or smack them, yak them. Cold got to be. You know? <laughs> it's funny because our heart, our hearts are in the right place and black audiences loved it as much as white audiences and, uh, there's so much fear now because of the cancel culture, which I think yeah. is a terrible thing for any creative endeavor and particularly comedy. Comedy is the first casualty of a dictatorship, you know. <laughs> and so, no, this, this, it's, it's awful, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to, uh, to say what I want. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I did. In between all the laughs and jokes, David actually shared a lot of wisdom. Let me know in the comments below what was the biggest insight that you took away from watching this interview. Be sure to share this with other airplane fans and be back here next week for more inspiring interviews.